welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Monday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. I'm excited to be with you today. Thanks for joining us. My Bible right now is open once more to the book of Isaiah, often referred to as the fifth gospel or the Old Testament gospel because of how much of the Lord Jesus Christ, his person, his work, and so on is portrayed here in the prophetic book of Isaiah. But if you can, get your Bible. Join me, Isaiah chapter 10. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. Obviously, you already know by my announcer that this radio program is the arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracks Incorporated. And by that term, tracks, I'm not talking about music tracks. I'm talking about an evangelism tool called a gospel tract, which is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The gospel tract I have in my hand was published here, but done so after the collaboration with a man who for 50 years has been a missionary in Utah, focusing primarily on those who are involved in Mormonism. I want to highlight this track here. You cannot just use this track with those of that particular religious persuasion. It's a great gospel track, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Along with getting your Bible out, why don't you get something on which you can jot some notes, please? Well, let me ask, are you a parent? If you are, how many children do you have? Did your children need to be disciplined as they were growing up? Did each of your children need to be disciplined the same way? Was your goal in disciplining your children different from child to child? Now, obviously, every one of our children are different. Some were far easier to train than others. And every parent knows that the right method of discipline in each situation can make all the difference in the world. Parents can spank their children. They can make their children go to bed early. They can oh, uh, withhold that dessert which the child likes. They can take away privileges, and the list goes on. Parents have many ways to apply the rod. I'm using the word rod with quotation marks. Yes, there's the literal rod, but there's many ways to use the, the rod of discipline, many forms of discipline. Well, friends, so does God. Every parent has the same goal for each of their children. Whether the parent is a believer or not, they want their children to be honorable, hardworking people who care about others. Well, God has one major goal for his children, no matter the era in, in history. God wants us to be holy and obedient. God wants us to be Christ-like followers of him. To accomplish this, God will use multiple kinds of methods to use the rod on his people, to discipline them. One of those ways is war, physical warfare. Get your Bible and join me, please. I mentioned that gospel tract here a moment ago. At the end of the program, my announcer is going to make known to you three ways by which you can communicate with us, giving us your name and address. If you'll do that, we'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. This one that's in my hand right now is entitled, Do You Know For Sure? Do You Know For Sure? This gospel track is a clear, just a crystal clear presentation of the gospel, but it's a great track to use with people that have been involved with a religious group where there's a human priest that must be sought for spiritual blessings and help. 
We all go to our pastors, but some religious groups, they have a priest, and it's only through the priest that certain spiritual blessings can come. If you've got friends, family, and so on with that kind of background, this gospel track is what you need. Do you know for sure? Please, please, please let me send it to you as part of that sample packet. Be ready when my announcer gives our contact information. If your Bible is open to Isaiah chapter 10, let me read verses 5 and 6. First of all, they say this, O Assyrian, the rod of mine, the word mine here is God's, mine anger, and the staff in their hand is mine, God's indignation. I will send him against the hypocritical nation, and against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take spoil, and to take prey, and to tread them down like the mire in the streets." Jump over now to verse 20 and 21. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay or trust upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. We'll just stop, please, right there. Now, most people, even those who have very little background or almost no background of the Bible in their life, they know something about the story of Exodus, where the Jews came out of Egypt. They've heard about Moses. They've heard about the ten plagues. They've heard about the crossing of the Red Sea. Right now, Whether you believe the Bible or not, I want you to think about one truth. The truth is this. God has many ways to deal with those people who disobey him, and his goal is to get them to turn to him and trust him. How unique were each of those 10 plagues? Each one was different. Each one was a different rod on the nation of Egypt. All through scripture, you're going to find events where God uses things like earthquakes and pestilence and famines and animal attacks and diseases and so on. All of these were rods to get people's attention. Many times, God has used war, and that's what's going on here in the book of Isaiah. It was war that God was using to get the attention of the Jewish people. God is trying here in in Isaiah 10 to get the hearts of both the northern nation of Israel, the Jewish people there, and the southern nation of Judah, those Jewish people. He was trying to get their attention to get them to turn to him. War was not God's first tool of discipline, but it would be his final tool for them. Here is my outline for Isaiah chapter 10. I got an outline here in front of me that has three words. Number one is the word wrong, wrong, based upon verses one through four. There was great injustice in the land of the Jews. We know from the book of Romans chapter 13 that governmental leaders, they're called God's ministers. They've been put into place by God for the good of the nation. But when they're good, the political, judicial, and so on, when those leaders become evil, God gets angry and judges that nation. Let's beware of a legal system which calls good evil and evil good. That's what was going on there in verses one to four. It was all wrong. My second outlined word is the word rod, R-O-D, rod, based upon verses 5 through 19. I read the opening part of this section. There the Assyrian nation was called God's rod, God's disciplining tool. And being, it was being used by God against the Jewish people. The Assyrians are called, in verse 5, the rod of my anger, God says. Still in verse 5, they are called God's indignation, God's angry uh, tool at the people of the Jews. In verse 6, God says that God himself is sending the Assyrians to be his rod. Sometime, go back, please, and read all of verses 5 through 19. And here is what you will see in verses 5 to 19. You see that the Assyrian, that their might, the might of the Assyrians is under God's control, 
but the mouth of the Assyrians, what they say, is not is out of control. The mind, the thought of the Assyrians is in their control, but those verses end with the mighty one of of heaven, God Almighty, will come and conquer and consume the Assyrians themselves. All right. Outline point number one, wrong, verses one to four. Outline point number two, rod, verses five to 19. Outline point number three is my word remnant. It comes from the text, really. It covers verses 20 to 34, remnant. Now, even though God must punish the Jewish people for their rebellious ways, God is going to save a righteous remnant. Now, please understand this very key point when you read the Old Testament scriptures. Here's the point. When God talks to the Jewish people, he's talking to the Jewish people. Does that overwhelm you? Does that go above your your peanut butter brain's ability to grasp? When God talks to the Jewish people, he's talking to the Jewish people. His promises to the Jewish people are literally to the Jewish people. They are not to the church. Now, there are in all of these passages pictures for you and I in this age. There's applications for you and I in this age, but never steal away from the Jews the eternal promises and blessings which God has made to them. And this remnant here is a promise to God that a righteous remnant will remain. There will be a day when a godly, trusting remnant of the Jews will follow Jesus as their savior from sin and as their sovereign over their cities. All right. So what do we today in the church age, what should we be taking away from Isaiah chapter 10? What lessons can we learn? Let me emphasize two lessons. Lesson number one is this. In Isaiah 10, God is chastening his people. God is chastening his people, the Jewish nation are his people. In the church age, they've been set aside temporarily, but there in Isaiah 10, God is chastening his people, the Jewish people. Well, over in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, we find that God is still in the business of chastening his people. Even in the church age, the saints of the church age, God will discipline them. God was using hardship in the lives of the Jewish people in the first century in which the New Testament was written. The first century was made up at that point in time, the church was primarily of Jewish believers. God was doing some things in their lives to move them to trust him, to obey him, and not to go back to Judaism. Friend, God still chastens his people to cause them to trust him. Here's lesson number two. It's this. God uses all kinds of events in our lives to cause us to think about him and to rely upon him. Can I be just a little personal here and tell you some of the things that God has used in the life of my wife and I to chasten us? God has used surgeries on my children, on my wife, God has used the lack of finances. God has used the cost of heavy car repairs. God has used wayward children. God has used attacks by other believers. God has used the threat of the loss of my voice when I was just 26 years of age. God has used sick parents and so on. God has used the consequences of my bad decisions. All of these have been God's rods in his hand in my life. So friend, what is God doing in your life? Are you turning your heart to God because of his work in your life today? Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. 6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.